<clears throat> My name is Russell Berman. I know many of you. I'm happy to meet some new friends uh, this afternoon. Uh, before I launch into some uh, reflections on Telos and share the podium with others who will have more to add, I really want to uh, say that the um, journal inspired by Paul, founded by Paul, could not be thriving today if it were not for, for Mary. Uh, Mary is the one who deserves uh, enormous credit for, um, as she said, uh, bringing her corporate world acumen to uh, a band of, uh, of um, financially challenged uh, humanities professors. Uh, and uh, she has made this a business, a business that works. And she's done this through her smarts and through her dedication and through her selflessness and her generosity. So I really can't begin this afternoon without asking you to join me in a stand up ovation. <laughs> Truth be told, that is that is the truth. Um, this afternoon, uh, I'm going to make a few brief remarks, as brief as I possibly can be, uh, remarks uh, about about Telos. I'm going to then ask uh, some of my editorial colleagues, uh, uh, Tim Luke, Adrian Paps, David Pan, to say some things uh, uh, relevant to the Telos project. And we're just the warm-up band for uh, for Jake Siegel, who will uh, talk about um, some of our literary work. Um, I'll introduce, have more to say about Jake in a moment. Um, but um, uh, Telos at its 50th anniversary, 50th anniversary of an independent journal uh, that's pretty remarkable in this culture industry. Um, the um, uh, I thought about uh, uh, spending uh, time talking about uh, the past, but that in some ways would be inimical to the Telos project itself, which is always about the, the future. Uh, so what is this Telos project? Uh, a journal that has been characterized by the lack of a party line, of a singular focus. It's not uh, uh, jack of unanimity. It's uh, about a multiplicity of voices, the kind of multiplicity that makes up any community. We're the journal that promoted Adorno in this country and the journal that point up promoted Schmidt, and if you can figure that out, uh, I owe you a drink. Uh, uh, we, uh, uh, there, I mean, there is a common denominator, but I won't believe, belabor that at this point. But, uh, you know, more, um, uh, more concretely, um, uh, Ken Johnson, who is here, where is Ken, uh, uh, has just uh, edited this really marvelous, uh, marvelous um, issue on Martin Luther King. The, the, uh, the idea was, uh, you know, 50 years Telos, um, founded in May of 68. Um, there's so much other 50 years going on, but we thought that uh, it'd be really important to talk about 50 years of Martin Luther King's assassination. And so thank you. For, and it, it fits into our agenda, too, because one of the themes in the, in the issue is the way that uh, the legacy of the Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr., in many ways has had its reverend character sort of extirpated. He's turned into a kind of secular civil rights hero. And the whole Christian natural law aspect is, um, has been subject to a kind of repression. So that's, that's very telos. Um, uh, so that was. Um, that was the last issue. Now we have our 50th issue. And uh, in the fall, uh, Helen Shin is uh, doing an issue on Korea. Uh, uh, we planned Korea, and what happened um, <laughs> is, is, is on the horizon. This goes to show you the power of the <laughs> power, power TLS. But I point this out because some of the journals that we were benchmarked with, that we grew up with, were born in a kind of world of Euro-critical theory, and we still do that, Adorno Schmidt. But we also do King and Korea, and we do, we've had China issues. And I think what's really great about Silas is that it's been able to take this um, intellectual imagination and move it, uh, move it globally uh, to talk about uh, a much wider range of issues than is normally the case. Uh, which sort of brings me to the second point. Um, uh, you know, it's not just that we're diverse 
uh, it's that um, we've been willing to explore heterodox positions. Uh, uh, we, um, we um, especially those of us who are in higher education, but otherwise, you know, should you know, recognize that we have a problem with the um, um, kind of limitations on the scope of discussion that it can take place without sanctions. Uh, and it's, um, it's, uh, it's disturbing. Uh, I was just uh, at Stanford involved in a case trying to uh, uh, defend a scholar of South Asia, himself South Asian, very much sort of critical of British Empire, et cetera, et cetera. He wasn't critical enough, and for that reason, got turned down for tenure. This kind of stuff happens too often, and somehow we've got to we've got to um, figure out a way to uh, to re re liberalize, if that's the right word, uh, the, the intellectual scale. Anyhow, we've been a, we've been prepared to take on these kinds of issues, um, and maybe even I know more important or additionally important. Sometimes critical thinking in higher education turns into a mandate for absolute cynicism about everything. Uh, kind of, if you doubt the veracity of any claim, that counts as critical thinking. And somehow that's not sufficient. Uh, there has to be a, a positive. There has to be some kind of capacity to appreciate legacies, to appreciate aspirations, and not denounce them uh, from the get-go. And I think that combination of the aspirational and the, the critical is one of the uh, uh, hallmarks of telos. A third, um, a third is, um, I'm thinking about Paul now particularly, uh, the, um, you know, we're living through this populist moment uh, uh, with all that it means, right? All of the, um, the coarse rhetoric on the one hand, all of the, the stuff that is legitimately uh, problematic about it, but also recognizing that it responds to objective phenomena. Uh, we've gone through 20 years of globalization that has made some people very rich and left other people on opioids. Uh, and people are not happy about this. And that is leading to, well, the Italian election, but um, Syriza on the left, or Podemos on the left, uh, uh, the, um, or Italian, Italy on the left and right at the same time. And that's, that's one of the, the uh, examples of how the political calculus of the past uh, 20, 30, 40 years are being, is being, um, um, is, uh, is being, uh, is being, being, being reshuffled. Uh, I just mentioned Italy, but uh, you know, all the more so the, uh, the this, uh, Tragedy in uh, in Syria. I think Mohammed Ghanem has just walked in. The uh, the 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 the, the um, demographic reengineering would be the um, the the uh, the, the um, um, sterilized designation of what is ethnic cleansing and this this catastrophe that is happening uh, uh, is part and parcel of this political landscape as well. Um, uh, we um, finally, I guess, uh, uh, telos and the, the future. Uh, 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 telos means goal. Uh, sometimes uh, it gets associated with this notion of a teleological thinking, the notion that there's a definitive end to history. That was in 1989, by the way. Uh, uh, and, uh, but of course, that's not what it ever meant for us. Right? Telos always just meant the open horizon the open horizon that humans ask and act in an aspirational way, aspirational way to, 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 to try to do something new uh, without repressing the past, to build on legacies in order to be creative. And that combination of backward looking and forward looking is the particular dialectic, if I may, uh, that, um, that uh, I think Telos inherited um, uh, from the various sources that it drew on and of course that uh, uh, I think um, was crucial to, to Paul's teaching. One of the people I've been working with at Telos uh, for the longest time is Tim Luke uh, from uh, Virginia Tech. Uh, and I'm going to ask Tim to say a few words now. Please. Okay.